Hello, and welcome to another Bionicle video. Today, we're revisiting the big bad of the Bionicle universe, Makuta. If you've ever seen the 2003 movie, The Mask of Light, then there's a good chance that you've wondered why his animation model ended up looking absolutely nothing like the version found on store shelves. It's not an exaggeration to say they could be two separate characters, and comparing official concept art to the set really highlights just how many differences there are between movie Makuta and the released one. Movie Makuta has completely different legs, with slicer pieces giving each leg an extra pair of joints, and Pohatu Nuva's claw pieces are attached higher up behind the knees. The body looks roughly the same, just with different panelling, but the arms are completely redesigned. And his mask, the Krakan, looks nothing like either version that would go on to be released, either the standard one or the so-called movie edition. Now, obviously a lot of characters ended up getting a redesign for the movie, but for the most part they were stylistic choices, like filling in some gaps or adding muscles beneath the armour. After all, the Toa designs had been finished for a while before the movie. But Makuta's a special case. Unlike the Toa, who were already on shelves, Makuta's model was still being designed while the film was in development. And that creates a bit of a problem for the animators. How do you make a movie when one of the main characters isn't finished yet? Well, in this case, the team behind the movie were actually given a mock-up, an early version of the prototype to work with. This kind of practice is fairly common. Studios are often given early concept art and prototypes to work with, since it gives them a head start on everything they need to do while development of the physical product is still wrapping up. And it's not normally a problem, unless of course the prototype is substantially changed mid-production, which is exactly what happened with Makuta here. Now, often these relics are lost to time. Big companies don't normally get too attached to their products, so once the prototypes have outlived their usefulness, they're either destroyed, dumped, or uniquely in LEGO's case, raided for parts. But occasionally they do make it out in one piece, through theft, or office clearance, or maybe in the safety of some enterprising employee's backpack. One such escape story is the now legendary Sand Tarakava, a mock-up of the Tarakava set that was used for reference during the development of the cancelled Legend of Matanui game. This particular piece escaped the scrap heap and ended up being offered as a prize for a bowling competition of all things. That's a story for another video, but the point is, they do sometimes make it out, and against all odds, that's just what happened to Proto Makuta. So, if you couldn't already tell, I've always been fascinated by prototypes and unreleased toys. There's just something so compelling about these little nuggets from behind the scenes, tantalising hints of where a toy line could have gone, or maybe did go in some alternate timeline. Like, did you know the Rakshi were originally supposed to be operated by Borok Krana, not Krata Slugs? What are the implications of that for the storyline? Or how about the fact there were originally supposed to be five Great Spirit robots, instead of a single one containing all of the Matoran universe? So, no Metru Nui, or at least not as we know it. Anyway, after a little digging online, it turns out that the Makuta prototype in question actually appeared in an online auction some time back. Three photos are known to exist. The first one, which you can see here, is an overview of the pieces, with the model unfortunately looking a bit like the Titanic wreck. The body is mostly intact, with the arms still attached, although the chest armour has broken off. You can see that the waist uses the same early version of the Matoran torso that appeared during Jala's development. The mask is in there too, a combination of the Pakari Nuva and the Vahi, although the two pieces have become separated. As for the legs, there seem to be two versions on display, one pair that lines up with the animation reference we saw earlier, with the extra knee joint, and another that seems closer to the final release version, although still quite a bit different. And scattered around are a number of the Rakshi pieces that form Makuta's thigh armour, although as you can see they're still quite early in the development stage and don't yet have that groove for the fins to slot in. The second photo is a lower angle, you can see the prototype staff, which uses some extra tubing for a bulkier appearance, and we get a closer look at those prototype Rakshi pieces. Interestingly, they're present in both black and dark grey, which suggests that even Makuta's colour scheme may have been changing during production. And the final photo shows a close-up of Makuta's head and shoulders, which includes a broken part of the Rakshi hinge used to secure it to the body, along with a pair of gunmetal grey roadway rider heads, which would remain in the final set, although positioned a bit differently. Unfortunately, this prototype disappeared from the public eye after being sold, but by combining the animation reference, the auction pictures, and the movie, it's possible to get a pretty good idea how it was constructed. And that means we can have a go at building one ourselves! So, here we go, a quick and dirty recreation of the prototype. He looks a bit weird with that Pakari on top, but honestly the mask is the least of his problems. Those legs might be more accurate to the movie, but they just aren't strong enough to keep him upright. Not even close! He goes down like a ton of bricks if exposed to even the most gentle of breezes, which is likely the reason that his design was so dramatically altered before release. But we're not giving up as easily as LEGO did back in the early 2000s, let's see what we can do. Part of the problem is in the hips. The legs attached to the body via a three long axle plugged into a ball joint, and if you've ever used those two pieces for articulation before, you'll know it's hardly a combo that's known for durability. And sure enough, the two pieces are nowhere near strong enough to hold the legs together. But an extra 20 years of Technic sense means that we have access to more pieces than the original designers did, so if you switch the ball joint for a ball with through axle, and change the two long axle for a four long with stop, it holds together much more securely. And then there are the knees. Although the back joint clips into position nicely, there's nothing to keep the front joint steady. Luckily there's enough room to attach a couple of L-shaped lift arms as bracing around the joint, 
which help keeping the steady while not interfering with the front to back movement. So, that's his stability mostly sorted. He's still a bit wobbly, but that enormous staff is strong enough to act as a support and keep him upright. But before we move on to the glamour shots, there are still a couple of cosmetic problems we need to solve. The original prototype has Pohatu Nuva's claws around the back of the legs for a bit of extra detailing. In the release version, these get lowered to the ankles and fixed in place with a connector, but on the prototype there's nowhere for them to go. Like, nowhere at all. They were either glued on by the designers, or added by the animators for a little visual interest. I didn't want to use glue myself, so I built a little support system to hold them in place. The pieces might not be accurate to the original, but they don't detract from the design too much, and he looks much better with the claws in place. And finally there's his mask, the Krakan. The prototype version is a Vahi glued to a Pakari Nuva, which isn't something I'm particularly keen on recreating, especially since the animation model does its own thing anyway. This would be an ideal time to use a 3D printed version of the mask, since there are plenty available online, but for now I've gone with a custom one. It's still a work in progress, but I think I'm mostly happy with the shape. I was aiming for something between the auction prototype and the film version, and I think it mostly fits the bill. I need to sharpen up the details a bit, but even as it is, the roughness kind of helps with the prototype vibe. Let's look at the prototype to Anuva. Although, I can't decide if I want it plain black, or black and gunmetal, or rusty like in the movie, so, hmm, what do you think? And of course, if a custom mask isn't your thing, there's always the standard release version of the Krakan. Anyway, with his mask in place, Proto Makuta is ready for action. As you can see, he's a very large figure, especially when standing next to the release Makuta, you can see just how much taller the prototype is. The height of the release version was one of the main issues I had with the set. He just didn't seem imposing enough for a Master of Evil, especially not compared to the Toa Nuva or the Exo Toa. But with those long legs, the prototype towers over the Toa Nuva, which is great to see. Up close, we can have a look at the articulation. His head works a bit differently, with side to side and up and down, but no rotation. His arms feel a little bit spindly, but there's still posability at the shoulders and at the elbows. And this time he's got proper fingers, so he can hold things or make evil gestures much more effectively than the release version, which has those silver Avoki masks for hands instead. And of course his staff is much larger too, built from two of those really seen 16 long Technic axles. Around the back you can see that the mechanism to move his torso is still in place, although it feels a bit wobbly. Still, a few twists are enough to get that big scythe swinging into action. And finally we move on to the legs. I don't know if there's a name for this kind of leg structure, but it's often seen on depictions of Satan, which is appropriate. And the extra posability means that he can put off some nice action poses on display, either crushing his enemies, or strangling them, or simply trying to keep them from waking up his brother. And if you're wondering what he looks like with legs based on the second version from the auction photo, well here you go. The new legs bring his design a bit closer to the release version, especially in terms of height, although I'm not sure that making him shorter is necessarily a good thing. The removal of his knee joints does undeniably help solve the stability issues, but even though he's now much less prone to falling over, I still think I prefer the previous version. The long legs make him seem just so much more intimidating. Anyway, that's Proto Makuta. Stability issues aside, I really like his design, and he's definitely worth building if you can spare the parts. Especially if you enjoy weird little things from behind the scenes like I do. So, thank you for watching, let me know what you think down in the comments, and stay tuned for more Bionicles. Ta-ta!